Hey friends, what is going on? It is your good buddy Sam and welcome. Welcome to another Max tutorial and welcome to 2019. Can I just say that I'm I'm really excited for 2019. I think 2019, I think it's going to be a good year for both of us, for you and for me. I think we're going to be healthier in 2019. I think we're going to make lots of exciting and interesting art in 2019. I think we're going to be more engaged politically, but in the spirit of generosity and in the spirit of genuine faith in the basic goodness of other human beings. But most importantly, I think that in 2019, we're going to get back into Gen Tilda. And of course, I've always been a little bit hesitant to go too deep into Gen Tilda on this channel, mostly because it involves a lot of math and a lot of math that I don't myself know very well at all. But that's a shame because Gen Tilda is the portal to a lot of really cool and amazing sounding stuff. Things like doing your own filter design, uh, things like physical modeling and analog modeling, all these really cool sound synthesis techniques are all made possible using Gen. And even though they're hard, I want to cover them. And it's made possible mostly because of this amazing resource, the Julius Orion Smith III homepage, uh, a, brought to you by Karma at Stanford, CCRMA, the mm, Communist California Romantic uh, Masonry Association, uh, who inexplicably made this page where there's all kinds of so all kinds of amazing stuff here, uh, just link after link after link describing you know how free verb is implemented in a block diagram form. Uh, you know, the tonal correction filter here shown as some kind of um, equation involving math. There's a lot here, and I think it would be ambitious for us to go through all of it, but it, tell you what, let's think of this less as a Max tutorial and more as a Max study group. Uh, I want to go through some of this stuff, and you and I together, we're going to learn how some of this stuff works, uh, hopefully. At least this is the idea. And um, what better way to kick off that whole process than by looking back to an earlier tutorial, in fact, the first tutorial I ever made on this channel, uh, Car Plus Strong. And Car Plus Strong uh, is all about an early idea about how to model a kind of string. It sounds a bit like a plucked guitar when you hear it. and. Uh, the idea, well, we'll see how to implement it in an improved version in Gen. But first, before looking at the improved version, let's look at the old version. This may be familiar to viewers of Tutorial 1. The basic idea is you have a delay line and you control the length of that delay line to be precisely equal to the period of a particular uh, waveform. And that way, when you excite the, so here's a little bit of noise. Here's a noisy chirp for you to enjoy. A little bit louder little bit of noise, you take that noise and you use it to excite the delay line, add some energy into it. And if you set the length of the delay line to be precisely equal to some length in milliseconds, uh, then you can actually get some tones out of it. Now, that's fine. The problem happens when you start to go up a little bit too far. You notice those last four notes all sound exactly the same. And if you look at the length of this delay line, not in milliseconds, but in terms of samples, you can see why that's the case. So we bring in this object called uh, MS2Samps that converts samples into, mm, nope, I lied, it converts milliseconds into samples. And let's look at the length of this delay line in samples as we get up there. So you'll notice that as you go from a number greater than 64 to a number less than 64, we're no longer able to delay anymore. And that's because the shortest this delay line can be is whatever the signal vector size is. Max processes audio in chunks. And if the delay line is smaller than this, the, def the signal vector size, which defaults to 64, you just can't do it. You can't delay that uh, by an amount shorter than that, at least if you're going to have a reverberation. Now you can take the signal vector size and make it something smaller than 64, uh, which will let you go even higher. But the problem is that that decreases the signal vector size for the whole patch and not just that one part. And that means that you're wasting, you're making your CPU work a lot harder than it needs to just on this one to, to meet, meet the needs of one tiny part of your patch. Now we can do better and we can do better using the amazing uh, technology that is Gen Tilda. So, uh, let's start by making a new patch and then just throwing in some of the same stuff we had before. 
a noise tilde, a line tilde, uh, make a ramp by doing something like this. So we'll jump up to one and then go down to 10 over the course of, sorry, go down to zero over the course of 10 milliseconds. We can mult, man, I cannot type a tilde today. We'll make a multiplier and then this uh, gives us a little chirp of noise whenever we push this button. So we'll make a live.gain and connect this to an easy DAC, all standard stuff. And here's what our chirp sounds like. Now, we need to connect this to a delay line. Uh, and I'm going to make this delay line not out here in the land of Max, but actually down inside of this object here, Gen tilde. And in case you've never seen Gen tilde before, um, the idea is very similar to either poly tilde or um, even just creating a sub patcher. So within this Gen object, we have this sub patch. The interesting thing about Gen is that these aren't standard Max objects. In fact, they come from a subset of objects that are in the Gen language, really not in the Max language, but in the Gen language. And what's cool about that is that this lets you more or less build your own Max object using something that looks very similar to Max. You would, I mean, you could be, you'd be forgiven for thinking that you were just, you know, that this is the same domain as this, but this is actually a high level description of a gen language that then becomes Max, which, you know, as a big old nerd, uh, I happen to think is pretty sweet. And what's really cool is if you look at, if you click the I just maximize this gen window and you click the C here over in the sidebar, you can actually see the code that this patch has generated. Um, so it takes the first input and the second input, adds them together, and then sets the output equal to that sum. Uh, it's kind of neat. You can each even highlight objects in this patch and see here in the generated code uh, which objects are contributing which lines, etc. So it's kind of neat. Uh, this is a high-level description of the patch uh, or high-level language called GenExper that ultimately becomes C or whatever and that gets compiled down and run inside of Max. Anyway, uh, but we can set that to the side for a minute and just think instead about how to implement our car plus strong algorithm here in uh, Gen. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of this plus and instead throw in a delay. And I'm gonna have to add an attribute to this delay at feedback one, which makes it possible for this delay line to have uh, feedback to feedback on itself. Uh, at feedback one also forces the delay line to be always one sample or more, uh, but it's the only way that you're gonna be able to have feedback inside of the gen system like this. Uh, so then I'm gonna take this in and I'm gonna do at comment um, noise burst, because this is where the noise burst comes in. And then with the second inlet, I'm gonna do at comment frequency because this is where you set the frequency that you like the delay line to resonate at. Then we'll just take the noise burst and we will multiply it. Uh, you don't need the tilde inside of gen by say 0 0.97 for now. And we'll just take that and feed it back onto itself like so. And then collect that output. Uh, you can collect the output before the multiplication. There's no reason to scale in that output. And uh, now all we need to do is set the length of the delay line to be proportional to this frequency. Um, and we'll just do the same exact thing that we did back in max, more or less. Uh, we'll start by converting this frequency down to uh, time in milliseconds. And then the one, the one you know, catch here is that in gen, everything, all times are in terms of samples, not milliseconds. And so setting this delay line, before we set the length, uh, we convert from this, which is gonna be the milliseconds, the length of a waveform in, in, in milliseconds, and we'll convert that using ms to samps uh, down to an actual sample value. And that's, believe it or not, all we need for the first kind of phase of this thing. And now I can throw in a k slider an M to F and connect this up like so. You know, one of the thing that I'll do is I'll do gen at title uh, car plus strong. Don't know why I said plus, but there you have it. And uh, I think that's actually it. Now if I connect this so that the line triggers every time we play a note. There you go. There's the uh, same car plus strong we had before. Now we can actually make this only now, of course, 
we can go very, very high, much, much higher, all the way. We could actually go all the way up to one over the sampling rate or 22,000 uh, hertz with this uh, method. Kind of neat. Now, we can make this carpal strong better in a number of ways. Better meaning more controllable, nicer sound, etc. cetera. Um, and one way to do that is just to introduce a little bit of... Um, a little bit of smoothness, a little bit of smoothing to the signal as it goes through this delay line to kind of uh, uh, smooth out some of the higher frequencies, the harsher the harsher frequencies in this um, in this delay line. And to do that, uh, you can think about taking a sample and then just averaging it with the sample that came previously, uh, which is going to have the effect of well, in two dimensions in an image, it would take the image and basically make it blurrier, and in one dimension with a sound. Uh, signal. Averaging samples like that is basically blurring, but the effect when you hear it, of course, is to make things sound duller um, or, or more mellow. And uh, we can accomplish that using an object called mix. That is just a crossfading between two inputs, basically. So we'll take the output of this delay line here and feed it into this mix, but then we'll also feed in um, history here and take that history and feed it back into the second outlet of mix. So this is actually making kind of a mini one sample delay line. History is the same as delay, except it's always one sample. I'm uh, making a mini one sample delay line here within our bigger delay line. And uh, I'll just connect this back up like this. And now we can make a parameter to control how much we mix in that previous sample. So we'll just make a param and call it damping, uh, lowercase d, damping at min zero at max one. And actually that min and max, um, the mix object won't accept any values smaller than zero or bigger than one, but you know, whatever. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, and now we can do something like a slider at float output one at size one to get a slider that goes between zero and one and just do damping dollar one connect this up to our gen and start to play some notes. Crank up the damping. Crank it back down somewhere in the middle. A much mellower sound than if there's no damping. Things are very uh, metallic. Um, there's one tiny thing. Uh, remember this history here introduces a single sample of delay. And so now we've actually made the overall delay of the whole feedback loop here uh, equal to this, the target number of samples, plus one because of this history. So now if we really want this to be tuned precisely, which I guess we do, uh, we subtract one here from the length of the delay line to compensate for the fact that we've added a history into the mix here. Cool. So the last thing that we can do to make this just a little bit cleaner, or I'm sorry, just a little bit, uh, well, I don't know, we can improve, I guess, this Car Plus Strong implementation. Uh, first notice that the high notes are very, very quick and die out almost immediately, while the low notes stick around for a much longer time. And if you think about it, it makes sense. The delay line's much longer for low notes. And that means that, in essence, the noise is going through the delay time fewer times per second. Higher frequencies are going through many, many times per second, and each time they do, they're being scaled down by this factor here. So it makes sense that the high frequency uh, pitches are going to die out before the low ones. If we want everything to uh, be equalized across uh, all pitches, then we want this scale down factor to be proportional to which pitch we're actually playing. Um, fortunately, there's a great and very handy object that helps us with this, and it's called T60. Now, the description of what T60 does I think is a little bit, so if you read the, the help text here, it says returns a multiplication factor to be applied per sample, which results in a given T60 time in samples. Um, I think another way to that, when I think of T60, the, what I think of is, um, you imagine it like this, you have a signal and you wanna know uh, when that signal is, or you, the, the idea is to take that signal and to dampen it out until you can't hear it anymore, which we, decide is minus 60 decibels. So you've got a signal, the signal is going to be 60 decibels quieter. And the way you're going to make it 60 decibels quieter is by taking some scaling factor, less than one, 
and multiplying the signal by that scaling factor over and over and over again. So if the scaling factor was 0.5, first your signal would be half as loud, then a quarter as loud, then one eighth as loud, then sixteenth as loud, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What you want to know is, um, what T60 will tell you is, say you're going to be multiplying your signal uh, by some scaling factor 100 times, say. T60 will tell you what your scaling factor needs to be so that after 100 multiplications, the signal is going to be 60 decibels quieter than it was to start with. And so the smaller the value you put into T60, the uh, smaller the scaling factor is going to be, the larger the factor you put the value you put into T60, the larger the scaling factor is going to be because the signal needs to basically endure uh, many, many multiplications by that value uh, before it goes down to the 60 decibels. So anyway, what we can actually do now is make a new parameter called, uh, let's see, param uh, decay at min 0 0.0001 because zero will, absolute zero will cause some issues, I think, and then whatever at max, it doesn't matter, 10,000. Um, and if we let this, so we're, this uh, decay parameter, we're taking to mean um, how long is the sample going to reverberate within this delay line in seconds. Um, so given that, we know from this uh, frequency uh, coming in here, we know how many times per second the noise is going to go through the delay line, right? Because those are one and the same. If the frequency is 100, then we've tuned the delay line so that the noise goes through 100 times a second. So actually, all we need to do is take that frequency and multiply it by, the frequency is how many multiplications per second, the decay time is how many seconds we'd like this signal to endure. And so if we take those and multiply them together, we get overall, how many times this signal is going to be multiplied by this scaling factor. And if we throw in T60, we know that after that many multiplications, the amplitude of the signal is going to be minus 60 dB, 60 decibels quieter. So T60 did a lot of uh, fancy or a lot of handy math to answer a, you know, potentially difficult to implement in, uh, difficult for someone like me to implement, I guess, uh, way. So anyway, I think now instead of multiplying by 0 0.97, we can multiply by the output of this T60. And there you have it, uh, a pretty decent car plus strong. Back in our main patch, we can do something like um, make another slider here and scale 0 0.1 point, 0 0.001, all the way up to say 20. And we'll have a quadratic scaling factor, uh, a quadratic exponent rather, and do at classic zero which as we all know is the way to make scale not broken. And then we'll do delay, or sorry, decay dollar one. And this will let us set the decay time for gen. Uh, I'll put a number box here so we can see what it is. So let's pick 10 second decay. Now remember that's, uh, it's 10 seconds to get 60 decibels quieter, which is quite a bit quieter. But you may notice that the high frequency sounds, more or less, are dying out at a, a rate basically equal to the lower frequency sounds. And that is uh, all I wanted to show you about uh, Car Plus Strong. Uh, we learned some good stuff, I think. We learned about uh, using delay for feedback inside of uh, Gen Tilda, mix and history to get a sort of one sample smoothing, and the T60 object, which lets you calculate scaling factors for signals that are being, uh, that are going through a delay line like this. And this kind of thing, uh, T60 delay lines, feedback is going to be a major, major, major theme in Gen Tilda. It's the key to modeling, to filter design, to making systems that do interesting, nonlinear, uh, crazy things. Um, and uh, yeah, we're gonna see a lot more of this stuff for sure as we go deeper and deeper into the amazing, terrifying, and very mathy world of Gen Tilda. So look out for more of that in 2019. Uh, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.